Well, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? All right, all right. Did you see what that is outside? Is that rain? <laughs> yes. Yes, as we said, if you're, if you're prone to walk across your lawn with bare feet, that'll hurt until we get some more green grass. But it is great to see everybody and to, to be seen by the folks who are tuning in on our on our Facebook Live broadcast. Welcome to Grace Baptist. I'm Pastor Tom Barron. If you don't know me, it is a pleasure to see you. We're excited to have you here with us in whatever form you are tuning in. And um, we thank you. And I just have a few announcements before uh, before we get going with worship this morning. Um, as you know, one of, our, one of our ministries here that we do is our Estonia mission. And we recently shipped off a large container overseas and across the Baltic. Somebody was asking me, we were looking at where it is on a map. Um, but very nice story, the, the folks next to the parsonage were having a huge tag sale yesterday. They had a beautiful sofa and love seat. And they said, you know what? We don't want to sell that, we want to give it. So it's just great. So if, you know what, if you happen to see the folks, they live in the parsonage next to stop over, say hi. You're from Grace Baptist. Thank them. Just, you know, we really appreciate it. But it's so exciting when we see the community coming together to support the work of the Lord. And we've been seeing a lot of that. So that is really awesome. Thursday night um, is a board meeting. It'll be here in the gym. So um, our board will be meeting. And also um, church members are invited to come to the board meeting. So we do publicize that. So that'll be in the gym. Be nice and safe. And during the week, Tuesday, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we will not be having daily devotions on those three days, nor will we have Bible study Wednesday night. I'm just, I will not be around during those days, so I'll, um, but if you need something, call the church office, we'll get you what you need, and we will be back Friday morning with our devotions, and so just wanted to, to let you know that if there's anything you need. Don't hesitate. Call our church office, visit our website, email, however it is. We want to hear from you. And if you want to connect with us more and you want to get our, our weekly emails and things that come out during the week, just let us know what your email is or if we don't have your address, we can, um, we can get your address in. We can also send you things. So we just want to keep in great communication with you. So what I am going to do is I'm going to turn it over to Dan. He's going to open us in prayer, and then we're going to worship the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Let's stand together as we come before the Lord in prayer. So, Lord, we thank you for this morning that we have to gather together and to worship you and continue to worship you. And we just thank you, Lord, for the goodness that you pour out upon us. And there's so many times, I know I can speak for myself, where we stop and think about just how undeserving we feel that you would be so good and kind and gracious to us in spite of the fact that we struggle with sin uh, uh, every day and, and all throughout the day but you walk with us Lord and you and you are our father and we are your children and I thank you Lord for that and help us to praise you Lord this morning everything within us Lord not hold anything back cast aside anything that's troubling us and just lay it at your feet Lord and we thank you Lord for this opportunity to be able to come before you and worship Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings, and that you are the God of wonders, that you are beyond that, that which we can really understand. We love you, Lord, for that. And uh, let us praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross 
before me. No turning back. No turning back. No man go with me. Still I will follow. No none go with me. Still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back, oh no turning back, oh no turning back, no turning back. Decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. And I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. No turning back. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. The Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky. Heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. Oh, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and Celebrate the light, and when I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. Oh, God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, the Lord of heaven and earth, Lord of heaven and earth. 
Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, you are holy, holy, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy, precious Lord, reveal your heart to me. Father, hold me, hold me, the universe declares your majesty, for you are holy, 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 hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Lord, we thank You that You are the Lord of heaven and earth. You are our personal Savior. You love us. You created us in Your image. Lord, and you are with us each and every step as we move forward. Lord, we just lift up this service to you. Let your words just penetrate our heart. Let us turn everything off that is keeping us from seeing you and focusing on you. We thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you. And Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. I love that song. That was like one of the first songs. I mean, that's an older one. Too, one of the first songs I remember uh, really hearing and singing along when, uh, when I had first come to know the Lord the third day. Very nice job. So it is great to see everybody and to be gathered together to worship the Lord. What a, what a blessing that we do have that we can do that. And it's something we never want to forget. And even as we've seen some things going on in the world, we, um, we find that churches are coming together and standing up for, for God's Word and, and for what is right. Um, a couple of churches in California who were really being um, come against have uh, been allowed to hold services. So praise God, God's Word is going forward, and God is sovereign. Let us never forget that. Amen. Sovereign over all things. And that's what we really want to be kind of wrapping up today as we're in our conclusion of winning the battles, claiming the victory. And this week, what we're focusing on is depression. And this is a serious topic that many, many deal with. But the title of the sermon today is Depression, Hope is in Jesus. And that is where we always want to keep our focus and keep looking to and understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read our text that will, that will start us today, and then we'll pray, and then we'll, we'll dig in. So we're going to start off in Genesis 4, 6 and 7. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you, but you must master it. That is God's word for us, God's people. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We would just ask that this morning that your word be illuminated for us by the power of your Holy Spirit so that our hearts may know that we can turn to you, that you are the true hope, that the true hope of the world is found in your Son, Jesus, who came for us, 
who died for us and who rose again. Lord, just prepare us to look at what your word has to say this morning and heal us, restore us, and revive us. We thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. 2020 has been an interesting year so far, hasn't it? <laughs> and I think all of us have been affected in some way or a variety of ways. And I saw a couple weeks ago for me sort of um, a micro, little like a microcosm, like a small snapshot some of the things. And we didn't have power. And many of us did not have power for an extended period of time. And I found my routine changed. And as I went through that week of no power and came out on the other end and even got to this week, I saw with some clarity what had caused the issue, but more importantly, what I needed to always have in my life. And my routine is such that I get up early in the morning, and I have a cup of coffee, and I sit down for my personal time in God's Word. And I've shared that with you. I've showed you I happen to be a person who I sort of write out my prayers. I write out how the Lord's the Lord is speaking to me, how God's Word, maybe some of the things I see that I need to apply to my life. And I do that. So, we didn't have any power. I would get up early. Oh, it's still dark. So I couldn't really read. I said, well, I'll get, I'll get to that then. I'll just have to change things. And then I would go to the grocery store and, and get a few, a half dozen eggs and uh, just a couple things so we could have breakfast to cook on the grill. And then the day would kind of get going. Now, granted, during the week, during the normal days, I do spend a lot of time in the Word as I'm preparing sermons, as I'm looking out, as I was still preparing devotions in case the power came on, meeting with people. And anytime I meet and we, uh, we discuss things, we, we're in God's Word. So I had time in God's Word. But I hadn't had my personal time where it's just me and the Lord focusing in on God's Word, illuminated by the Holy Spirit. The book that is inspired was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And the day would go on, and then it would come nighttime. Oh, if I missed it in the morning, a lot of times I can, if you know, I have an early morning, something going on, I can get to it at night. But then it was dark, and there were no lights. And I found myself kind of each day of the week getting a little more, hmm. oh, man not dealing well with this. I must be, I must be set in my ways, maybe as we get older. And then toward the end of the week, uh, I, th I think it was probably was Saturday, I spoke with my, with my mom and dad on the phone. And we chatted, and they still didn't have power. We had gotten it back, and Saturday morning I had been able to really just dig in, and I, oh man, I felt oh, so good, and my day, and I was studying through Proverbs. I talked to my mom and dad, and Okay, and it was um, when Wednesday. I'm here at the church now. This is this week. Power's back. Everything is simply normal. And the phone rang. Donna calls my phone, and she says, "Your parents are here, at the house." Oh, okay. That's odd. They don't always just hop in ever. And uh, so I said, "Gee, I gotta go home. You know, see what's going on." So I walk across the parking lot, and they're there, and we're sitting talking. They said, we wanted to come over because when we talked to you at the end of the week, you didn't sound right. You didn't sound good. And I knew that I didn't feel good, that, you know, I, I just, I was out of, out of sorts. And my parents had sense, because mom and dads, that's what we do, right? Or what they do, still even at 55, my mom and dad, they know. And it had really come to revelation to me that when I was not in God's Word for my personal time, I had started really kind of getting into a little bit of a, little, I don't want to say despair, but I, I wasn't myself. I wasn't 
I wasn't focused where I needed to be. I wasn't feeling quite right. I was down. And it's depression, a depressive situation. And this is why so many times, let me say, God's Word is critical. I saw that really for myself. I was dealing with that. And that was just a small snapshot. So it, Part of what we're going to look at today is we look at depression. And we look at depressive situations and those moments. God's Word is critical to us. And as I've said, as we've dealt with fear, loneliness, anger, and doubt, if God's Word is just part of our Sundays or our Sunday mornings, and perhaps we spend no other time in it, and it doesn't have to be the printed Word. It can be that we listen to it. It can be you know, we have Bibles on our phone. We have apps. God's Word is just so critical to us. Because as we know, one of the core foundations of the Christian belief, of the belief of this church, is the sufficiency of Scripture. Scripture is sufficient for everything. So I think that's just so important as we look at depression. Um, Christian author, well-known author, C.S. Lewis. He's written just a, a wide assortment of books from a classic that most of us have probably read, Mere Christianity, to uh, the Chronicles of Narnia. But he also wrote a book called The Problem of Pain. And C.S. Lewis did struggle through his life with depressive situations, with depression. He had his ups and downs. And he really spends a lot of time in his reflections in the problem of pain. And he writes about this. Mental pain is less dramatic than physical pain, but is more common and also more hard to bear. The frequent attempt to conceal mental pain increases the burden. It is easier to say, my tooth is aching, than to say, my heart is broken. Depression is a serious issue. Even as I approached it, to preach on it as part of this series, the thing was maybe moving this series out because it's challenging to deal with in the 35 minutes that we have, I cannot accomplish a full overview of depression and depression. But we do know that our hope is in Jesus. And as hard as it is to sometimes admit that we're dealing with situations that are bringing us down, that are depressing us, whatever the word we use. This has been very challenging. I've asked, I've talked with some folks and I know that there's been prayer being made for me because I specifically said this week, please pray for this sermon because it is a difficult one to deliver as, as it is difficult sometimes to hear because admitting Maybe I am dealing with this, but as we go through in just our short time today, I want to present you with the hope that is found in Jesus. And you know what? I would also encourage you, there's at either door, there's some, some little pamphlets that just talk about depression. Maybe you're saying, oh, I'm, I, I'm really good. That's great. And that's absolutely. And we know if Jesus, I'm, I'm going good. But, you know, I, I know somebody. I have a friend, a co-worker, a family member. I don't hesitate to pick that up and, and share that with them and, and just give them some help. It's biblical-based. It's written by Jay Adams. And if there's more that they need, we can certainly have them call the church and we sit down and we look at God's Word because God's Word does contain the hope that we need. And I want to say something now that some people find uncomfortable to hear, but you need to hear it. Depression is not a disease, 
nor is it a sickness, nor is it a sin. Let me say that again. Depression is not a disease. Depression is not a sickness. Depression is not a sin. And maybe that's all you'll take out of here today. But that's a start on a journey as we look to endure through what sometimes affects us. And remember, I've said this as we've gone through the first four weeks. Fear, anger, loneliness, and doubt are not sin. But as we'll look at this morning, any of those things, when they get excessive, can lead into depression. Depression, as we saw in our text, and we'll talk about more, opens the door to temptation. And then as God himself pointed out to Cain, sin is crouching at the door, waiting to master us. So that's why we want to deal with things. We want to look directly onto depression and some of the things that maybe we can take out of here this morning. There's not a silver bullet that's going to fix everything, but it's a start. But we have to realize, we understand, depression is not a disease, a, um, a sickness, or a sin. The true hope for depression lies only in one place. And that is in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. But there is hope. There is so much hope as we look at God's Word. And one scripture that I so often start with when I have an opportunity just to, to, to sit with people and get together and, and friends, because, you know, I've had a read this myself. I've had a friend who's a pastor share this scripture with me. 1 Corinthians 10.13 No temptation has overtaken you but such as is common to man. And God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. Jesus Christ has enabled us to endure it. Now that doesn't mean it's going to be an easy journey. That doesn't mean the endurance isn't going to involve some work and even sometimes some discipline and even sometimes admitting that maybe I have a, a little bit of a sin issue here. we can work through these things. And that's the hope that we want to look at this morning. We are clearly not lessening what depression is. We are not lessening the fact that many are dealing with it right now. Here this morning. Here listening. Here watching. It won't be easy. but it will be done. Even as we looked at that scripture, we see, basically tells us that we're all dealing with very similar things. 9.5%. This was a study done in 2019. 9.5% of Americans over the age of 18 suffer from a depressive situation, which in medical terms would be depression. Each year. So if you've dealt with certain situations that bring you into somewhat of a, a depression, you know that they can return. This can be something that we will battle, but we can endure. 9.5% of Americans over the age of 18. 
the population of the United States is 331 million. Therefore, that's just about 31 million people over the age of 18 prior to this year struggled each year with a depressive situation. 2020 has certainly changed things. Just for comparison purposes, 5 million people have been diagnosed with COVID-19. 31 million struggle with some sort of depressive situation. But I firmly believe we have to look at the difference that we have. A virus... So really the cure we don't know. Nobody knows. But I can tell you that the hope and the cure for depression is right here in God's Word. And I want you to understand that, that God's Word is sufficient. God's Word is the revelation of Jesus Christ to us. And our hope is in Jesus Christ. See, we're starting to put this together. We see in our text this morning, we, we know, and we're back in Genesis 4, we know the story of Cain and Abel. We know what happened leading up. Cain and Abel were presenting gifts to the Lord. And the gift that Cain brought was not acceptable. We know that afterwards, as we see the Lord spoke with him, that sin was crouching at the door to master him, and it certainly did master him. He took the life of his brother. But so often, we read the beginning, we see the end, we miss these verses in 6 and 7. Genesis 4, 6 and 7. We see the Lord addressing Cain. We see God saying, Two words to Cain that indicate to us his character. Why? God says, why, why are you angry? And then he shows us in verse 7, if, if you do well, God, in the why and the if, is making an appeal to Cain and presents Cain with the very character of God, which is the emotion and concern for his people. Cain, all that you're going through, well, why are you angry? If, if you do this, and we see God has presented Cain as he presents all of us, with his hope. Do you remember our very first service back as we regathered fully? We talked about the unchanging God. The unchanging character of God. We see that in Exodus 3.16. Moses speaking to the people what God had spoken to him. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has appeared to me saying, I am indeed concerned about you and what has been done to you in Egypt. As we've looked at fear, anger, loneliness, and doubt, now depression, each week we've seen the concern that God has for His people. God is unchanging. And that concern that He has is for each of us. And He has presented us out of His concern a way to heaven. If you're dealing with depression and a depressive situation, 
we need to start looking to God and as He sees us. Up to this point, Cain in our text has not done what he knew was expected of him. And here sometimes is, as they say, the rub. And if we're dealing with some things that are bringing us down in depression, Cain had not done what he knew was expected of him. His heart had not been right in bringing that offering to God. He brought the unacceptable offering knowing full well what he ought to have done. Cain knew what to do, yet had refused. And that's one of the things that we see as we, as we sometimes explore depression in our lives. We often find ourselves not doing the things that we ought to do. And that can become a challenge. I'm going to share in Psalm 42.5 with you. As the sons of Korah wrote, why are you in despair, O my soul? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him for the help of His presence. We see the psalmist there. As we talk about, many times as you're reading in the Psalms, you'll see the word despair. Just as we saw in Genesis, his countenance had fallen. Despair. That gives us the idea of depression. But the psalmist knows what to do. What the solution is. Often the beginning steps in our journey as we endure through depression to move past it is doing what we ought to do. And in this case, we see the psalmist talking about hope in Him, praising Him, and seeking Him. Being the church, being the hope, being in unity. But even as we look at Cain's situation, and you think, man, Cain, Cain, man, he knew what to do and he didn't do it. And now he's angry, and God is speaking to him. Man, God should just take him out. But that's not what we see. We see, as we look at Cain's situation, we find an example of the divine grace and mercy of God that is on each one of our lives. God is not a tyrant who wishes to crush sinners without mercy. As God encourages Cain right there, God is seeking for Cain as He seeks for us to assess ourselves in light of who He is. Say that again. God is not a tyrant who looks to crush us sinners. Just as He approached Cain, He wants us to assess ourselves in light of who He is. We need a little more detail on that. Because so many times as we look at our lives and we look at our situation and we say, ah, oh, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I reacted that way. Oh, I'm in fear. I'm lonely. I'm angry. And we start moving downward. What is so critical for us is to sometimes go to the beginning. I mean the beginning of God's Word in Genesis 1.26 as we see the creation story. Genesis 1.26 tells us, God said, then let us make man in our image according to our life. That's a key that we forget. 
Because sometimes in our depressive situations, we see ourselves, maybe sometimes as the world has seen us, as others have seen us. Things start to come to light that maybe somebody has said, you'll never amount to much. You won't accomplish anything. You'll never be good at that job. You'll never, you'll never, you won't, you can't, you're not. We've all had somebody tell us that. But God says, in my image, you are created. Many times people will tell me, said, Pastor, so often you go to that scripture. Yes, I do. Because you need to know this morning that no matter where you are, no matter what you're dealing with, that each of you were created in God's image. That's what He said. That's what we have to remember. You are an image bearer of the Almighty God, the Creator. He didn't make a mistake. He didn't get confused. As I used to say, and I, I still have, there's a couple kids from youth group who would remember it. God never said, oops were created in His image. The problem with Cain, that he, he didn't see that. His countenance fell. He saw what he had done. He saw his circumstances. He fell to hopelessness. His countenance fell. Depression is hopelessness brought on by sorrow. Depression is conquered by hope. And if our hope is properly placed in Jesus Christ, then we can endure it. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying we can endure it. Because hopelessness trials, sorrow. They're all functions of our fallen nature. But even as we look in Genesis, as we have been each week, and we see the fallen nature of man, what do we see rising above? The fallen nature of man and the sin of man. We see the mercy and the grace of God on full display each and every time. You know, one thing that I did think about this week as I put this sermon, uh, prepared the, f the final parts and put it together was that I often get asked a question. I, I like answering the question because then, of course, it opens the door. But I love to step through. Who do you work for? No, I mean, I, I, that's, that's wide-ranging. If people say, oh, you're a pastor, who do you work for? Well, maybe they're thinking, I say, well, a church, uh, I do this, I don't know. Oh, I work for God. Because now, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm got the, the door's opened a little bit and I get my foot wedged in there. I say, oh, okay. Okay. I say, well, so, what's the job that you do? You show up Sundays, you preach a sermon, and off you go. I get to point people to Jesus Christ. Now I've got my knee in the door. Say, what do you mean? Oh, well, let me tell you. But I get to show people the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. That's my job. That's awesome. I work for God, and he says, show people the hope that is found in my son, Jesus Christ. hate to say, folks, I know some of you really love your jobs. I think I, I got the best one. Because when we can point people to Jesus Christ, we see life's changed. So we have the story of Cain, 
And we know what happened. We saw what happened. Sin mastered him. But now there's a story in the Bible. It's in Mark 5. It's about the demon-possessed man. And all the struggles that he went through. And all the things that were happening to him. We look in verses 3 and 4 of verse 5. This, some descriptions for us of this man. And he had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one was able to bind him anymore, even with a chain because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been torn apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Yes, we did talk about this very same man as we looked at fear and we looked at anger. Fear, anger, loneliness, doubt. They can all come together, start with spiraling us into depression. So we see this image of this man. I mean, there is this guy's in bad shape. People are afraid of him. So people are dealing with fear because of what he's doing. He's angry. The people are angry about him. It's just a real bad situation. And he is, he is a problem. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and the mountains and gnashing himself with stones. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him. And then verse 15, Mark 5. The people, they came to Jesus and observed the man who had been demon-possessed, sitting down, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had had the legion. And they became frightened. We want to see this man. His life was changed. As we look, there's a book out there. It's called the DSM. Now it's the DSM-5. It gives us description of what mental disorders. And as depression, as we look, this demon-possessed man was showing so many signs of a variety of what the medical world calls depression. He was somewhat manic. He was violent. He had super. He had uh, superhuman strength. I mean, they're all points. The man had depression. But in the end, where was he sitting? He was sitting in front of the hope, and that hope is Jesus Christ. And we see that right there. This man who fits the model of depression. But the world says this depression, all these things. He found his hope in Jesus Christ. You know, biblical hope does not falsely anticipate deliverance from every weakness every problem, everything that we have going on in our life that is hard to endure. This side of eternity. It doesn't promise that this side of eternity, life will be a bed of roses. As I've always said, I wish I could find that in God's Word and tell you that, but it doesn't. But, but what we do see in God's Word is that, that biblical hope longs for the full deliverance from all our weaknesses, all our things. It longs for the full restoration, revival, renewal that is promised to us in the presence of Jesus Christ when we enter into eternity. We do have that hope. That is the hope that we have to focus on. Again, I'm not saying it's just me. Okay, I'm just going to focus on the hope. 
there's there's work, there's steps that have to be done. There's a there's a process we have to learn more about God's word. We have to, why do you think we offer so many and try to encourage people so much to be in God's word and to be in tune with God's word? To say that God's word has answers, but there is work, there is discipline involved. But when we're at the feet of Jesus, we have hope. Remember our man, he was at the feet of Jesus. He wanted to stay with Jesus. Jesus said, oh, no, there's work involved. Now you're going to go and tell everybody. You're going to go. You're going to do. But even as we look in Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11 is known to a lot of people as the, um, the, hall, the, the faith hall of fame. That's what it's commonly called. And if you've read Hebrews 11, you'll see that. And I'll read Hebrews 11, 32 through 35. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, Quench the power of fire, escape the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, became mighty in war. Women received back their dead by resurrection, and others were tortured, not accepting their release, so that they might become a better resurrection. And then we look at 39 and 40. We'll talk about this for a minute. And all these, having gained approval through their faith, did not receive what was promised because God had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they would not be made perfect. All of us together who are believers in Jesus Christ, all of us who have had the struggles, all of them who were put to death in some way that may have been unpleasant, we all have the promise of Jesus Christ when our faith is in there. When we are in eternity, things will be made perfect. Tears will be wiped away. Biblical hope doesn't promise that it will all be perfect here. Biblical hope says one day it will be perfect. And that's where we have to look Where is our hope set? Where is our hope placed? Remember last week we talked about doubt? And I said doubt so many times is increased by affiliations with things as opposed to commitment to Jesus. It all ties in together. When our hope is in things of the world, as opposed to Jesus, the hope is just fleeting. When our hope is focused on Jesus, we can work through those moments that are going to bring us down. The mental heartbreak that C.S. Lewis talked about. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the person who seeks Him. That's Lamentations 3, 24 and 25. Written by the weeping prophet, the crying prophet, Jeremiah. Jeremiah struggled so much with the circumstances and the situations he saw around him. But he kept his hope on Jesus. He kept his hope there and he said, Lord, I'm going to strive. I, I see this. I'm crushed by it. But Lord, my hope is in you because you have promised that you will come back. And that one day I will be in eternity with you. Are we prepared to seek after Jesus this morning? Maybe you're here 
Maybe you're watching and you're saying, I don't know Jesus. But I'm really dealing with something. And I, I, you know, honestly, and if you're saying, I have no other place to turn but to Jesus, I say, praise God, the Holy Spirit's working. And you need to make a decision. Just like the song we saying, I have decided. And you can decide this morning. You can reach out to us here. You can come up and see, say, I've never made a decision, but I need to know, I need to know some of this hope. And you can do that. And you really need to do that because if you're listening or watching this morning, sitting here in church, and saying, well, wait a minute. I'm struggling with my hope here. You say there's hope there. But if I were to die today, I don't know if I'd be there. You can make that decision today so with confidence saying, I have decided I'm going to follow Jesus. We talked about confidence. Confession. We went through this series. We talked about turning from sin. We didn't talk about being perfect either, though. We never talked about that. Jesus is perfect. You can turn to Him this morning, and I would encourage you that you need to do that. Depression is brought on by not doing what we ought to do. Moving past depression and dealing with depression and enduring through depression is doing what we ought to do that God has taught us. And God has put these things in place. God from the very beginning promised us a Savior. And that Savior, Jesus Christ, came, lived, died, and rose again as the worship team starts making their way up here. I, I just need to, to give you a few things that you can start to, start to look at. Because endurance implies, as we read in 1 Corinthians 10.13, a journey, time, getting through, pushing through, dealing with some pain. But the hope is in Jesus. And I said three things as we started. Be the church, be the hope, be in unity. And those are some simple things that we can look at to start. Be the church. This isn't just, oh, Pastor saying, be the church, do this, do that. No. Be the church because it can change your life. Be the church means living out the Great Commission. Every week, we have talked about the Great Commission, which says, be my witnesses. God didn't create you by accident. God didn't create you and go, oops. God said, I've created you, and you will be my witnesses. That's part of being the church. Being the church says, the Great Commandment. Love God. And the second is just like it. Love your neighbor. When we start as individuals to be the church, we start to see who God created us to be. He created us in His image. He created you. He created you with Whatever you're thinking of is, well, there's this that's not good in me, that's not good in me, this is broken, that's not right. And, but I created you and you will be my witnesses. You will love me. You will love your neighbors. Depression is doing... Is, depression is not doing the things we ought to do. And there's three things right there that we ought to do. But you know what? Sometimes, as I said, to get through it, we have to address things. Stop making excuses this morning saying, oh, I'm just not good enough. Somebody told me I could never do that. This person said that. This person said that. 
God said, in my image, you are created. You will be my witnesses. You will love me. You will love your neighbor. The cure for depression is doing what we ought to do that God has shown us. Being the church is not some nice cliche, something that we could put on a t-shirt. It's about you doing what God has called you to do and created you for. How about be the hope? Because when we are the hope, we see the hope. We know the hope. Being the hope. Start loving people maybe who are a little different than us. You know, when we look in, in Micah 6 8, and we see some very, what could be difficult words to hear. He has told you, O oh man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice? to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Because when we are the hope, we will see the hope, we will know the hope, we will seek the hope with all that we are. Like Cain, God has confidence. We're created in His image. We can do well be the church. Stop making the excuse in your life why you can't be the church. You know what you have to do. Be the hope. But how about being in unity? Unity is wide ranging and I'm going to bring us down to one point. God created you in His image. Are we unified with Him? Are we unified on His mission? Are we unified in the hope that is Jesus Christ? Each moment of your life, you are in the presence of the hope of the world. He has never left nor forsaken any of us. And sometimes in being in unity, with God Almighty, we have to give ourselves grace. We have to show ourselves mercy. We have to allow sometimes others to love us. I have seen from many of you, I can personally speak to this, the way that you have loved Donna and I in so many situations. And I see so many of you striving to be the church and be the hope. But there's that third part of being in unity. Taking that hope and that heart and that love you have for others and letting God love you. Letting others minister to you. Not being afraid to sometimes say, to that network of activated believers who will pray for you, who will cry with you, who will pick up God's Word with you, who will love you, to say to them, I'm struggling right now. I need you to pray for me. I need you to listen to me. I just need you to love me. Don't be afraid to do that. You can be the church, be the hope, and be in unity. There's some challenges right there. I'm not saying any of those things can be easy. We put our hope in Christ. We put our hope in Christ. No other hope exists in this world that can change everything and that can allow you to endure 
the things right now that you think I can't deal with. I have no doubt that many of us are dealing with something right now that is breaking us. The thing is, we haven't given it to the Lord yet. We haven't said, Lord, this I can't deal with alone. Maybe you haven't felt confident enough to go to a network of believers, friends, brothers and sisters in Christ and say, I can't deal with this. Somebody comes to you this week, a friend says, I'm, I need you. We'll be the church, we'll be the hope, and we'll be in unity. If you go to somebody, be the church, be the hope, be the unity. As Hebrews 12 2 tells us, we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, because that's where our hope lies this morning and every day. And that hope is never changed. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You for Your presence. We thank You for the hope that is only found in You. We thank You for loving us. We thank You for creating us in Your image. Lord, we thank You for Your mercy, Your grace, and Your love. Lord, this morning I know that so many of us need to understand this simple fact that we are loved more at this moment by You than we even know. You are the unchanging God. Lord, fill our hearts with the love that is You, with the love that is everlasting, and with the love that will move us into eternity with You. We thank You, Lord. We love You and praise You. And Jesus, in Your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing Hosanna. King of glory coming on the clouds with fire the whole sheep the whole
Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Oh, heal my heart and make it clean. Open up my eyes to the things unseen. Show me how to love like you have loved me. And break my heart for what breaks yours. Oh, everything I am for your kingdom's cause. And as I walk from earth into eternity. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Oh, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Almighty God, over all things, over all people. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. We just look to give you all the glory. As we close today, I'll read from Psalm 121. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forever. We praise God. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. God bless each one of you.